Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, another HSR analysis. Today we're looking at a hook, a fire destruction character. And if we take a look at our little sheet that we have from before, uh, destruction means a general DPS, meaning AoE and a single target. So let's get into it. His basic ability, obviously, is single target, but his skill is also single target, but has a few effects. So he deals single target damage based on some percentages of his own attack with a 100% base chance to burn enemies for two turns the single enemy that he hits. Uh, and then he'll also deal fire damage equal to a certain percentage of Hook's attack to adjacent enemies. But note that only the single enemy will be burned from my understanding. Furthermore, when afflicted with burn, enemies will take dot damage equal to a certain percentage of Hook's attack at the beginning of each turn. So he's your dot applicator with a bit of splash damage in the mix. And uh, furthermore, his Eidolons and everything enhance him to a pretty good degree in my opinion for a nice dot build. Uh, his ultimate is deal 5 damage equal to a certain percentage of Hook's attack to a single enemy. Uh, after using her ultimate, the next skill to be used is enhanced, which deals damage to the target enemy and any adjacent enemies. So you kind of just enhance your skill after you cast her ultimate, which is fine really, you'll just deal more damage with your skill. It is what it is. Uh, the first talent, or the only talent, when Hook attacks the target inflicted with burn, deal additional 5 damage equal to a certain percentage of Hook's attack and additionally regenerate 5 energy. This one I actually really like because, well, energy restoration. Not a lot of characters that we've covered so far have an extra bit of energy regen in their kit, just naturally through a, a specific number. Some of them have percentage rate increases, uh, which is slightly different from an actual number regeneration. So that's pretty neat. And then the technique is uh, immediately attack the enemy upon entering the battle. Hook deals fire damage to a random enemy. In addition, there is a 100% chance to inflict burn on all enemies for three turns. Uh, when afflicted with burn, enemies take a certain percent of dot damage uh, at the beginning of each turn. I like this technique, and if you're looking to deal damage, this might be one that you'll actually use a lot. Uh, because, well, you just uh, afflict dots at the start of every turn. Like, there's no there's no wrong doing with that, right? right? No matter what the dot is, it's always going to be good. Dots are always good. Uh, unlike, let's, let's say something like Herta, I believe it is, or Asta, whichever one was the ice one. I believe Herta, which you just deal ice damage at the start of the round. This one, you apply a dot, which will persist three turns, which is rather good. Then you can also just, and obviously they're burnt already, so you can kind of like combo that with this and constantly get some energy regen and deal a bunch more damage. So it's, um, it's very synergetic with the rest of his kit of burning enemies. Uh, that's so far so good. The first trace, though, uh, when Heart Oil in the Flames, which is his talent or her talent, my apologies, uh, is triggered, restore HP equal to 5% of max HP. So... When you hit a burning enemy, you restore 5 max HP, which is quite good for your survivability. It's not a lot of HP, but it is definitely some. Second trace, a resistance to crowd control effects increased by 35%, nothing too crazy. And then last trace, when, when you're using your ultimate, Hook has her action advanced 20% and Hook additionally regenerates 5 energy. It's pretty cool. Um, I believe that essentially means is after you use your ultimate, you will then be pushed forward in the attack chain or the... Uh, in the action loop uh, by 20% and then additionally regen 5 energy. So a lot of base energy regen with Hook here, which is quite good, I like that. I like seeing base numbers. I don't believe something like Genshin has this, which I wish it did actually, um, but regardless, um, and maybe it does, I don't know. Uh, you have those, you know, 10 energy regen, advancement forward. The base character sounds pretty good. Uh, nothing like blows me out of the water here, like nothing's really like astounding me. It just is a dot build instead this time. You're, you're running a dot build with the character. Early dot application means that you can have further dot application uh, uh, and make it a lot easier. And high damage after you use your ultimate, you use your ultimate rather, and then your skill is further enhanced. So it sounds pretty good standalone. And the attack style is like single target with like splash damage. I wouldn't call this AoE. This is splash damage. But we obviously have to move on and look at the Eidolons. Hook's enhanced skill deals 40% more damage. So after you use your ultimate and enhance your skill, your skill, that, that enhanced skill will deal 40% more damage, so it's fine. Uh, one of my favorites extends the duration of burn caused by Hook's skill by one turn, so more dot damage. The character is kind of centered around being a dot build, so if you burn characters um, with, your, with your skill specifically, it does specify skill. So if you do it with your technique, it will still be the, um, uh, the three turns. It won't go up to uh, four turns. Uh, this is just for the skill, which the skill is a uh, a two-turn burn, so it kind of puts it on par with your technique, which is fine. Um, third Eidolon, skill level two, and also basic attack plus level one, which is fine. 
Idol on four, when Hook's talent is triggered, there's a 100% base chance to burn the target and its adjacent enemy for two turns. Uh, enemies inflicted with burn uh, will take fire damage equal to certain percentage. So when you trigger the talent, which is when Hook uh, attacks the talent, a target inflicted with burn, you will then furthermore um, burn the target and also inflict burn to AoE targets. So Idol on four is like the, the requirement for, let's say, permanent burn application. That's pretty much like the bare minimum that you're going to have to need. Uh, if you're going to want permanent dot application to everyone on the field, because, well, obviously you, you apply burn once and then you apply burn to that character again. Now three people have burn and then you do it to one more to a person, maybe two more get burned, however many enemies there are. So you're going to need Eidolon 4 if you want permanent burn build, as well as just a lot of damage. Now Eidolon 5, ultimate plus two, as well as basic plus one, which is fine. And then Eidolon 6, hook deals 20% more damage to in targets inflicted with burn. Uh, further cementing the fact that they're a burn character, but obviously also just raw damage on burn enemies. So, so far, really good. The first dot character that we found, uh, and honestly, I don't, I don't know, it's uh, burn and, and kind of dot builds have a high chance of not being successful uh, because it's the same reason that burning doesn't really work in Genshin. It, it, it's a very shit reaction, even if you run the, the actual good team for it, which is like the whole Nahida C2 thing. Um, so burn builds have a chance to be good, have a chance to not be good. This one seems to be a bit more burn is like the kind of like the, the, the sub layer and you really need to get certain Eidolons to make your raw damage on burning enemies actually be the main selling point. So baseline, the character is fine, but obviously we have light cones and uh, as they are a destruction character, when you use destruction light cones, the three stars are fine for the most part. Basic skill damage here, as well as just general damage above the enemy 50% mark. Is, is fine. You can run either of these, but I do recommend running his signature one or her signature one. I do apologize again. Uh, Moles welcome you, which is for every basic attack skill an ultimate used by the wearer. The wearer gains one stack of mischievous. Each stack increases the wearer's attack by further percentage. I believe this doesn't say it has a stack count, so it might stack to infinite. Who knows? Uh, but this is the one that I recommend just because, well, you're going to be using your skills, your basic attacks, and your ultimates very frequently, and you want to be doing that as frequently as possible because, well, burn application and dot application. Uh, so that's that really. You're going to have exponential increase in damage. Uh, the other choices do definitely work. Um, uh, something like Arlands doesn't really work, the Secret Vow, because you're not really getting this last bonus here because you're not really reducing your own HP consistently enough. So I'd re I wouldn't recommend Arlands as you're only just getting this flat amount right here. Um, uh, nowhere to run, increase the wearer's attack, and then whenever the enemy defeats, it restore HP. This one, again, compared to the signature one, it's really fall short because you're just getting a base amount of damage uh, with some healing, and the character's not going to be in imminent danger because they're obviously nothing like Arlen, where they're constantly dying. Um, so, again, this one wouldn't be overly incredible. And then um, a Wolf Walk time could actually work because you do burn enemies, and it, it has the caveat of burn here. So increases the wearer's attack by a certain percentage and increases their damage to enemies afflicted with burn and bleed by a certain percentage. So you could actually run this one safely because you do apply one of those two dots. So the Moles Welcome You and Wolf Walk Time are probably the two best slots for this one, but obviously I recommend the Signature, which is the Moles Welcome You. But then Five Star, uh, this one actually is, a, is an easy choice as well. On the Fall of an Aeon is the best one. So whenever the wearer attacks, increase their attack by a certain percentage in this battle up to four times. So you get a four stack buff permanently when you attack four times. And that's pretty much the same kind of play style as the Signature one, so you can easily run those two. And then when the wearer inflicts weakness break on the enemy, wearer's damage increases by further percentage for two turns. So it's just overall good. It, it plays the same playstyle as the signature, but it's just going to be higher values. So that works. And then obviously something irreplaceable. This one increases wearer's attack damage by base amount, which the base amount is pretty high. And then when you uh, defeat an enemy or, hit, or hit an enemy rather, immediately restore some HP and then gain a massive bonus at the end of, uh, or until the end of the, your next turn which is fine. This one is fine. I'd still recommend uh, On the Fall of an Aeon. It's just a lot easier and a lot more um, streamlined with the actual playstyle of the character. Uh, but then again, I'd always recommend the actual signature right now, unlike Herda. Uh, with this one, I would actually recommend the signature for the character. The Moles Welcome You on Hook is probably the best to go for. Now, Relic Sets are obviously very important as well. It's pretty obvious to be quite frank with you. Firesmith of Love Forging and these... Honestly, building these characters has become rather straightforward. The more you learn, the easier it is to come to these conclusions. So, Firesmith of Lava Forging is the go-to I would recommend. Fire damage, and then increase the wearer's skill by a flat 12%. And then after unleashing your ultimate, increase the fire damage of everything, uh, or rather by your next attack. 
uh, but in general, uh, of, of any next attack by 12%, which is quite a good 24% in, in total, plus 10% fire, very good. Uh, that's the relics that I'd recommend. You then have planetary ornaments, and this is where you can kind of like play around a bit depending on what role you want to uh, have the character play. If you want to have them be the uh, weakness breaker character, then you can go for Talia, Kingdom of a Banditry, which is absolutely great. If you want to increase your chances, because obviously there was no uh, static chances of burn in the character, they were all base chances, which then are altered by uh, enemy resistances to certain uh, effect hit rates. Uh, you could obviously go for increase wearer's effect hit rate, which will then increase their rate of applying a, um, a dot, which is quite good, quite good. If you want to be a bit more of a energy recharge character, you can go for Sprightly Von Wack. Uh, I wouldn't recommend it just because it's a base 5, it's very low, and you're not kind of an alt-dependent character. A bit more damage will be Space Ceiling Station. Inert Cell Soda will give you a bit more crit and consistency, and uh, so will Celestial Differentiator. Uh, but this one is a bit more uh, a bit, a bit more demanding, as you need to reach 80% or higher for the basic attack and skill damage increase by 20%, so it's a bit more demanding. Uh, so any of these choices are really what, what fits your kind of need. Uh, but the easiest ones to pick out is Inert Cell Soto and Space Ceiling Station as they are just kind of generic boosts. So those are the two I'll recommend, at least for now. And that's been Hook. Hook is a fire damage dealer uh, with AoE application of burn and like splash damage application of burn. A lot of damage going out and they're going to be a passive character that you have on the team that just deals burn damage uh, for the most part until you have to deal their ultimate which will then deal increased damage if you obviously have a lot of the eidolons a lot of bonuses and that is a sound from windows thank you so much g hub um such a such an easy character to build actually uh and honestly the gameplay loop doesn't seem too crazy as you're just burning people you're just burning enemies really uh it's as simple and straightforward and i hope you guys enjoyed if you did learn something uh by all means like the video and sub to the channel and uh, i'll catch you guys in the next honkai analysis peace out have a great day bye